Leafs fans have had enough with Mitch Marner. Pretty much everyone calling for him to be traded immediately. People saying they hate him. And one of the teams that people are maybe mocking him to go to the most is the Montreal Canadiens of all places. And while Montreal does need some offensive talent and they probably have the prospects to do it, is that even a smart move? Does anyone want this guy? We're going to break all of that down coming up on this episode of Habs Digest. So stick around. But hey, if you guys like daily Montreal Canadiens and even sometimes all NHL content, this is the spot to be hit that subscribe button right now help us grow jesse we're not going to waste any time we're going to get into this mitch marner fiasco it is getting out of control i'm sick of reading about this looking at leafs fans everywhere how much they hate him for pretty much good reason i suppose at this point in the playoffs but there has just been way too much going on around him and way too many rumors about him going to the montreal canadians and even one of the top personalities for the montreal canadians tony marinero said on a recent uh, on a recent show, he said, "I wouldn't even give Caden Gooley for Mitch Marner. How are you going to replace Gooley?" And his co-host Jean Charles says, "Well, we have 13 to the dozen. Too many good defensemen." And Tony retorts by saying, "Hey, look, it's still hard to replace a guy like Gooley, right? He's just a guy that you don't want to get rid of." And this was talking about the fact that maybe you could trade Caden Gooley for end prospects for Mitch Marner and after just a brutal overtime loss, the Leafs same old song and dance every single year. Jesse, would you trade anything really for Mitch Marner, let alone Caden Gooley, one of the Habs' top defensive prospects? This guy, 50 points in 57 playoff games. He's an $11 million guy in the regular season, but not so much when it matters the most. Yeah, 26 goals last year. It's still not bad, but he's a little bit more of a playmaker. I don't know if he's really that goal scorer that we really need. But mm -hmm. I think the greater point is that I think the Leafs are, are barking up the wrong tree. And, and let me explain why. Josh, in your opinion, who is like the real leader of the Toronto Maple Leafs, in your opinion? Why, it's it's, it's tough to tell. Certainly not Sheldon Keefe. Uh, it's maybe John Tavares. I, I suppose you could argue Austin Matthews. <laughs> I would hear you, and I would definitely go for Austin Matthews. I just feel like this is the player right now in his career. He's got the biggest presence in that locker room therefore he's really affecting the team the most right so if you really want to do a fundamental change with this organization I feel like culture is kind of their number one issue with the Toronto Maple Leafs you really want to tackle this head-on at the source or otherwise you're just kind of doing the same thing again and again I get it might be a good point that maybe they are a better team if they trade a Marner what is good about that is we obviously have lots of defensemen that would really benefit the a lot that's kind of been the problem for, for, for a long time right but I think if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs I think you really need to tackle this you know really from the ground up and of course it'd be hard to kind of you know get rid of a player like like Austin Matthews but I would argue that it would be even more important than, than trading and than trading Mitch Marner right who were kind of looking at this situation I don't feel like they're looking in the right direction because I feel like really Austin Matthews he's the one that really dictates what's going on with that team and I think that that's really the change that you need to make if you're really looking to take that next step as the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm fully on board with that. And I'm about to go on a, on a bit of a rant here, okay? I apologize for this in advance. I don't know how long this is going to be, but this is, this is my thoughts on the whole situation. I think you're bang on with this. I think a lot of it is a culture problem in Toronto. You look at how Boston reacted to adversity, how they overcame it. Their head coach was calling out their players. Pasternak is a good player. He got to show up. And what did he do? He showed up. He didn't suck. He agreed. He said, my coach is right. I would have done the same thing in that situation. Mitch Marner benched in the third period earlier this year cried about it basically right and like look i'm not going to try and put down mitch marner as a person or anything there's there's no need for me to do that we're all about positivity on this show and we're all about positivity in the montreal canadians organization but i think it's precisely that reason that i don't think mitch marner should be a montreal canadian no matter if you can get him for less than what he appears to be worth right and like even in the playoffs 50 points in 57 games Yes, he has not performed well in like elimination games and stuff. He's still a good player. He's still a guy who can get 100 points any given season. He had 14 points in 11 games last year, 8 points in 7 the year before. Again, game 7 is not so much. Yeah, I get it. I get people saying you sign him, you trade for him, you get an extension, you get him for cheap, whatever, right? I just don't think that's going to work. The only situation this works, Jesse, is if Montreal takes that, oh, you know, I can fix her kind of, kind of deal where you're like, we take Mitch Marner, we try and change him because he was sucking during this series. It was very evident. We saw Marner telling him, to, or not, we saw Nylander tell Marner to stop crying on the bench. It's not Junior anymore. And we know Marner and his father have had certain problems. They basically, you know, cried until they got the $11 million. 
and that kind of attitude, seeing how we performed on the ice, not getting into the gritty areas, just stick handling away from everything, not creating the chances that we know he's able to create. I feel like the only way I would ever want to see him on the Montreal Canadiens roster is if you could change that. And that Montreal Canadiens organization is so positive. It's so, so welcoming and a team that really just wants to play for each other and win. And I feel like that is what lacks in Toronto, the responsibility, the fact that these guys like Matthews and Marner and all these guys have been able to get away with this kind of behavior for so long. It's not instilled in them to fight for themselves, fight for their team, have that winning culture. And I feel like Montreal maybe does have that. That's definitely yet to be seen. I don't want to get ahead of myself and say Montreal has a super amazing culture that's going to win a Stanley Cup. But this is just vague statements, Jesse. And maybe I, I took too long on that. I'm sorry. But I just... I know he's so, so good. And I like watching him play, especially when he helps Montreal. But... This, these playoff performances and his personal attitude, I feel like are two things I just can't get over in favor of some of Montreal's top young talent. And this past series has really reiterated why this culture is so important. You could argue, how is bringing a 100-point player potentially to your team a net negative in, in any type of way? And we've seen that, you know, with the Toronto Maple Leafs, they have no shortage of people who can really get lots of points, but winning when it really matters is really the issue, right? So again, this just gives us so much hope and can't cues of why the culture is so important everything else, why it's so fun for us as media, as fans, also covering this team, just because there's such an positive laugh, whether it's Suzuki, Caulfield, all these guys are just so easy to really rally behind, right? And really feel good about this team. And I feel like that is so important, right? Like, obviously, we need scoring, we need that so much, but not at the expense of culture, right? Like mm. adding a player like this right now, it's it's really tough to say it again, we're not trying to disrespect anybody, but this adding Mitch Marner to this team would be catastrophic, you know what I mean? And it's, it's tough to say, right? But it's just, he's had had his chances at playoffs and not like he was just there a couple times at playoffs and didn't make it happen we've just seen a repetitive it's really become like a track record at, at this point in time right so really we're seeing why kent is doing the way that the things in the way that he is and why that's going to be so important for this team going forward yeah exactly like you you put took the words out of my mouth like we've seen him there a lot of times he's had so many chances I don't know if you can just change that in Montreal. And I still get the comments. Look, a lot of you guys are going to disagree with us. And I would love to hear from you down below. Because honestly, I can see the point. I can see the appeal in getting a, a top-end offensive talent in the league. A guy who's always in that top 10, top 20 scoring in the NHL. 100-point seasons, basically. I mean, I know 99 is his career high. But 99 and 80 games, 85 and 69 games, 97 and 72. He's a 100-point guy. We can just say that, right? But... Like, and what he could do with Montreal's top end offensive talent could be really good. Like him saucing some passes over to Caulfield or over to Slavkovsky, whatever, right? In a vacuum, it looks so good until you unveil the layers, reveal the layers, and you get to when Montreal's finally competing for the playoffs. Not to mention, Marner has a no movement clause. He absolutely has no reason to go to Montreal, and he might not even be able to handle the pressure. That's something too, right? Like, it's a pressure cooker here in Montreal, so... Any player coming in is definitely going to have to be someone that has thick skin. Don't know if that's Marner. Maybe he can change. I don't know. But also, he would need an extension, basically. Because he's a UFA after another, I think, another season, another two years. So, you'd have to agree to an extension with him. And if you trade for him now, you get him. He could just leave after a couple. I think with all these factors, Jesse, I just think there's no way they do it. I, I don't see any reason, like... Unless somehow you you convince him for sure and you know for a fact his mentality will change and that he will sign an extension at a more reasonable cap hit. But I think that's way too many ifs, ands, and buts to ever solidify a yes, I would trade for Mitch Marner statement for me. Because it's also really changing the dynamics of this team, right? You're coming in now. Nick Suzuki, our captain, isn't the player earning the most money. And I get where people say, well, at a certain point, we're going to need to maybe spend a little mm -hmm. bit more, whether that's through a player that comes through a trade or a free agency. Absolutely. That's a solid point. And to get that production. But that player we bring in, I feel if they're going to be making more than Nick Suzuki, there needs to be a little bit of leadership pedigree coming yes, in where, yes. okay, that makes sense. You can get paid more than Nick, but it's, this is what you're adding. Like with our next top player to add to our top six, like we need to either have a proven track record of winning in the playoffs, which is what we're building about. Nothing else matters or a player with just such a slam dunk. It's a clear cultural 
fit with this organization, right? And we're starting to see like, you know, it seems like, oh, culture, maybe it doesn't matter. It's just words. No, it, it really does matter. And the Toronto Maple Leafs have really highlighted that for, I think, all teams in the NHL this year. Yeah, I, I, we don't need to get into a whole nother discussion now about William Nylander. I think he showed amazing character. He's a guy we've talked about before. Like, maybe you wouldn't want to get someone from the Toronto Maple Leafs. If there's one guy on that team, other than maybe Matthew Nyes, who honestly I think is quite good. I think we're going to see a lot of Nyes and Slavkovsky comments over the next coming season. Similar similar players, but Slav's going to be better, obviously. Uh, but, uh, but William Nylander, he showed maybe the most guts out of anyone on that team. He's always their top performer. Look, he's he's maybe one of the guys, but hey, he's not the subject of this video. Mitch Marner is because as as you guys saw in that intro, there's so many people talking about this, and we'd love to hear from you. Let us know down below your thoughts on Mitch Marner potentially joining the Habs or maybe another team, or maybe just leave some hatred for the Leafs because I know probably Habs and Leafs fans alike are going to want to leave that down below, but that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate all the support you guys have been showing as of late. I'm Josh Goss, my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.